Pangolins are the most trafficked mammals in the world and are facing the risk of becoming extinct. They are amazing creatures and I find them adorable. Generally, people do not know much about them, so I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you just how amazing they are. Although they are mammals, they are covered in scales, although they do have a little bit of fur on their undersides. The scales are made from keratin, just the same as our fingernails, and it is because of these scales that they are so relentlessly hunted. There are eight species of pangolin, four live in Asia and four in Africa. The IUCN has classified the Sunda, Philippine and Chinese pangolins as critically endangered. The giant ground pangolin, tree pangolin and Indian pangolin are endangered and the long-tailed pangolin and the temink pangolin are classified as vulnerable. All species are declining in number. Because efforts to raise pangolins in captivity have not been successful and they are nocturnal animals and quite elusive, some facts about them, such as their lifespan, are unknown, but we do know a lot of other facts about them. Pangolin species vary in size from about 1.6 kg to a maximum of 33 kg, and their protective overlapping scales vary in colour from light to yellowish brown through olive to dark brown. Their diet consists of ants and termites, and they live in areas where they can find plenty of them, such as tropical forests, savanna grasslands, thick brush, and even cultivated areas. Some species, such as the ground pangolin, are completely terrestrial, while others, such as the black-bellied pangolin, are adept climbers, using their claws and semi-prehensile tails to grip bark and scale trees. They are able to run quite fast, and often rise up on their hind limbs to sniff the air. They are also capable swimmers. Pangolins have poor hearing and eyesight, so they rely heavily on their sense of smell to find food. They have a muscular stomach which has keratinous spines projecting into its interior. It contains small stones which mashes up and grinds food in a similar way to a bird's gizzard. They have no teeth, but have well adapted paws for digging. Each paw has five toes and their forefeet have three long curved claws used to demolish the nests of termites and ants and to dig nesting and sleeping burrows. They have extremely long tongues, which can be up to 40 centimetres long. It is so long that it has to be anchored close to its pelvis. This long tongue enables the pangolin to burrow deep into ant hills and is coated in a sticky saliva to help it lap up hundreds of ants. It is estimated that a single pangolin can eat 70 million insects in a year. The ants or termites try to bite the pangolin, but their tough skin protects them from this. They are also able to close their nostrils and ears, thus preventing their crawly prey from entering. Pangolins reach sexual maturity at about the age of two years, and most pangolins give birth to a single offspring, although in Asian species, two or three young have been reported. When they are first born, the babies are around 15 centimetres long and weigh about 340 grams. Luckily for mum, their scales are soft and only begin to harden after a couple of days. Pangolin mothers have a nesting burrow where they nurse their offspring for three to four months, although they are able to eat ants and termites at around one month old. Mum will protectively roll around her baby when sleeping or if threatened and adorably, baby pangolins get to ride on the base of mum's tail as she forages for insects. As mentioned above, pangolins are the most trafficked mammal in the world. In fact, it is so high that annually they are trafficked at a higher rate than rhinoceroses, elephants and tigers combined. In both Africa and Asia, pangolins are killed for their meat and scales, which are used medicinally. They have been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years. The scales are said to promote blood circulation and increase lactation in pregnant women, cure cancer and arthritis, and even enhance male vitality, none of which has a scientific basis. Pangolin meat is considered a delicacy, especially in China and Vietnam, and are available in high-end restaurants. Their meat might be steamed or soaked in wine while whole pangolin fetuses are used for soup, something which I find particularly upsetting. The poor animal is sometimes killed at the table, 
to prove to the customer that they are consuming genuine pangolin meat. In 2016, pangolins were given the highest level of protection under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, which came into effect on January 2, 2017. This banned the commercial trade of all eight pangolin species and their parts. Although pangolins are protected species in China, there is a thriving black market for pangolin meat and especially for the scales. Demand for the scales of pangolins is the driving force for poaching. Today, demand for pangolins in Asia is being supplied by pangolins from Africa, possibly as three of the Asian pangolins are critically endangered and are hard to find. It has been estimated that poachers kill as many as 2.7 million African pangolins every year. While the exact number of pangolins illegally hunted is unknown, seizure records suggest that the hunting is unsustainable and hypothesis corroborated by reports from hunters that pangolins are becoming harder to find. Sizable shipments of whole pangolins, which are sometimes alive, have been seized in Asia, with most of the largest recent seizures having involved pangolin scales sourced from Africa. For example, illegal pangolin trade in Nigeria seems to have grown significantly in recent years, with at least 51 tonnes of pangolin scales seized in 2019. The size of the individual seizures is also increasing. Before 2016, the largest seizures intercepted amounted to less than 10,000 live pangolin equivalents. In 2019, the three major seizures made by Singapore were equivalent to more than twice that number. One of the seizures consisted of 14 tonnes of scales, which represents around 36,000 individual pangolins. It is very sad how these sweet, harmless creatures are hunted. Based on fieldwork undertaken by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime in Cameroon and Uganda in 2018, it appears that the initial hunting of pangolins is done by local community members. Sometimes large numbers are involved, and it is often in addition to their main job, which is farming. It does not take a huge amount of money to buy the equipment needed to hunt pangolins, anywhere from 2 to 5 US dollars, and the hunters can make anywhere from 8 to 13 US dollars for a small live pangolin, and 25 to 30 dollars for a large one. In Uganda, hunters report being able to catch anywhere from 1 to 20 pangolins per day, so for them it is quite an easy, lucrative sideline. As pangolins will roll themselves into a ball if they feel threatened, some poachers are able to simply pick them up and put them into a bag. For example, in Uganda, hunters track the animals and set traps, while hunters in Cameroon use wire traps or hunting dogs. There is a horrific story with video footage where a pangolin tried to evade capture by hiding in a hollowed out tree. A fire was lit in an attempt to smoke it out. As the pangolin starts to suffocate and lose consciousness, it makes a bid for its freedom, but is captured, bagged and taken to a hut where the pangolin was reportedly bludgeoned with a machete until it can barely move. It was then, while still alive, placed in boiling water. Pangolins are immersed in hot water or fire and descaled with a knife. They are usually dead before this happens. The scales are then dried in the sun in centralised drying camps set up by the hunters in the forest. The first buyers are often small business owners, local authorities or transportation workers who have enough cash to buy stock from local hunters and pay for transit to urban areas. They consolidate scales until at least 10 kilograms are ready for transit. Once in urban areas, the scales are sold to international traffickers, primarily Chinese. These traffickers tend to be individuals with enough wealth and political connections to ensure protection from the authorities and can include high-level government officials and wealthy business people. From the initial hunter to the consumer, 5 to 15 people may be involved in the trafficking with prices paid to each person increasing the closer one gets to the consumer. For example, in Uganda, traders who consolidate scales are paid quadruple the price per kilogram than that paid to the hunters. Trafficking is done by sea, air and land, and amazingly parcel post is also sometimes used. Shipments have been found under frozen meat and ice, hidden in logs using candle wax, 
and stuffed inside steel barrels of other goods. Large consignments of pangolin scales in shipping containers are either misdeclared or concealed under cover loads such as plastic waste. Recent large seizures of pangolin scales are often mixed shipments of both pangolin scales and ivory and it would seem that traffickers are often using the same routes to export and import pangolin scales as they do ivory. Earlier this month, President Biden made an encouraging announcement that he planned to direct certain prohibitions on the importation of and impose trade measures on certain products from the People's Republic of China. If the PRC did not make significant commitments to implement CITES directed measures to protect pangolin species by December 31st. Although this date is a delay on the original date, it is nonetheless a great step forward in the fight to save pangolins and will hopefully be the turning point in saving them from extinction. Like many others, I will be eagerly awaiting to see if the People's Republic of China have made the necessary changes in their law enforcement to end the illegal trade in pangolins. If not, then conservationists will be relying upon President Biden fulfilling his promise to save these amazing creatures. And what a sad place our planet would be without the adorable pangolin living on it. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.